You're watching Unrelent Gaming. This is Vegeta, the Prince of all Saiyans. Make sure you subscribe to Unrelent Gaming and push the like button for me. Or else you'll be Hakai! Not Beerus! You know how this works. Make sure you enable all notifications on the channel and watch the entire video all the way through. And don't forget to follow Unrelent Gaming on both Instagram and Twitter. That's enough! On with the video! With our heroes now scattered throughout the multiverse and looking to seek out the absolute strongest warriors they possibly can, for the coming war involving the current angels and gods of destruction versus the older gods of destruction and angels from the past, with people like Vegeta who is currently on planet Sadala alongside with Broly and looking to train the universe 6 Saiyans in order to become stronger and being able to hold their own against what is to come, the million dollar question going forward is will Vegeta be able to gain the trust and the acknowledgement of the universe 6 Saiyans in order for them to train? under him or will a different set of circumstances occur to where Vegeta's loyalty and trust will be tested by the universe 6 Saiyans? Now before we dive any further into this video, if you are new to the channel and of course have a love and passion for all things Dragon Ball related, including its manga, anime, video games, fan animations, fan mangas, and more, in which would also like to be kept up to date with everything in regards to the Dragon Ball Super manga, the Dragon Ball Super anime, Dragon Ball video games, and any and all additional content within the Dragon Ball universe, then I do encourage you guys to head on over and smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications by clicking on the bell icon to always be notified whenever a brand new video is posted onto the channel as well as giving this video a big thumbs up by slapping that like button down below if you guys are simply excited to see what the future holds for the Dragon Ball franchise and with all that being said I want to thank you all so much for your time thank you all so much for supporting the channel and now let's dive straight into the video <laughs> As we kick off the Dragon Ball Kakumi manga chapter number 6 special with Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta having to be shown welcoming planet Sadala Saiyans, with everyone else having to be shown standing there and wondering as to what they were going to do next, Vegeta did in fact mean business and he was not willing to let up against any of the Saiyans as he further went on to tell them, leave if you want to you cowards but I won't even be able to look you in the eye so don't come crying the day the enemy knocks on your door to kill your people. But all of a sudden out of nowhere one of the Saiyan admirals just as Vegeta Vegeta had gone on and saying this had showed up behind Vegeta and telling him, now you're facing us, but then, unbeknownst to one of the admirals, Vegeta was in fact so fast that the admiral wasn't able to do anything in being able to stop Vegeta during this moment, because just as the admiral had gone and slowly having to turn his head, it was only then during that moment was when Vegeta had taken it upon himself to set the example in casually being shown having to strike the admiral in the stomach with such a casual punch that you can almost kind of see the pain emanating from the admiral's face which again, Vegeta isn't necessarily trying to kill or severely harm any of the admirals there, but he simply wants to go on ahead and prove himself, improving his loyalty, improving his strength to the remaining Saiyans that are there, in order for them to kind of see as to how far ahead he is by comparison to them, as with the first admiral shown having to fly past everyone all of a sudden, the second admiral had then showed up behind Vegeta again, as he too was looking to make a difference by blasting Vegeta from behind, but once again, to no avail, Vegeta didn't even move even after having to be struck from behind, so instead, through the smoke, Vegeta had emerged in them being shown having to knee the second admiral directly in the stomach, in not only demonstrating his durability, but demonstrating his speed alongside with his cunning wit, to be able to endure everything that these Saiyans were able to throw at him until, once again, the third admiral had attempted to attack Vegeta from behind, but Vegeta had proven himself once again in being able to duck on under, and grabbing onto the floor, and them being shown having to kick the admiral in the stomach, in essentially having to render all three of them immobile 
mobile by simply having to go as far as to use three simple moves, which pretty much went on to confirm everything that Vegeta had been telling the Saiyans of Universe 6, as a giant boulder was then shown having to crash down on everyone, Vegeta meant serious business by what he wanted to do in helping the Universe 6 Saiyans, but given the fact that they were so doubtful in Vegeta's loyalty and doubting his ability to even make a difference, as the other Saiyans took it upon themselves in observing as to what had happened, Vegeta went on to take notice of this as he then went on to respond, you look at me like a monster, a bloodthirsty beast. Do you understand what it's like not to be able to protect your own against an enemy that is far too dangerous? But even then, without even having to notice, one of the boulders that had came crashing down on Admiral number three was then beginning to be seen cracking until then out of nowhere. All of a sudden, the giant rock had then exploded as through it, it would only then appear as though how one of the admirals was finally then able to transform into a Super Saiyan as she went on to comment, Sorry, my king, I had no other choice. As the moment she was then shown having to dash right towards Vegeta again, she then went on to shout, come on guys, transform, as in fact the other admirals did, because even as they themselves were shown having to slowly get up, all of a sudden, just like Admiral number three, everyone was then being able to shown having to finally transform into a Super Saiyan, which deeply had pleased Vegeta as he was shown smiling, because this was Vegeta's intention the entire time, as during the middle of this moment, King Sadala went on to chime in, repugnant, the only thing you can count on these days are robots, you are are all more disappointing than each other, he says. All that drama, Vegeta chimes in. Let us settle our accounts. It's better for e But then, without even wanting to hear anything else that Vegeta had said, King Sadala went on to shout, Silence! Settle your accounts, he adds. I do not care. But never use this demonic form on my planet, he adds. If I catch you again, I will banish you, King Sadala tells them. Which, subsequently enough, King Sadala appears as though he didn't want any of the other Universe 6 Saiyans in using the Super Saiyan transformation, which was why he basically had threatened in outcasting them, as of course they were then shown reverting back down to base form, with Vegeta also then being shown having to do the same, he then proceeded on turning around and responding, come Boma. As all the while in the meantime, elsewhere in Universe 6, we then see how both Frost and Hit seem to be dwelling within this massive cave, which mind you, appears to have somewhat of a beast or a monster lurking within the waters within it, because it appears as though out of all of the relationships and establishments formulated so far, both Frost and Hit seem to have one of the most unsteady and destabilizing relationships so far, because Hit really doesn't trust Frost, Frost doesn't really trust Hit, which was as they were shown moving throughout this cave, Hit had then noticed how one of these monsters had descended on down into the water, where subsequently enough, this monster had looked as though he wanted to make his move on an unsuspecting Hit, as with the monster shown having to swim around and then having to emerge, he then went on to comment, I've been swimming at full speed for about 20 20 minutes. I lost them for sure, he adds, but then, as the creature itself had assumed that he in fact had lost Hit and Frost out of nowhere from behind him, Hit was shown having to just so casually stand there in watching as this individual was swimming, as with the creature then quickly turning around in attempting to attack Hit, it was only then when Frost went on to shout, NOW! The time lag! And that's exactly what Hit had done, because what Hit had managed to do was lock this creature in his time cage, as of course he managed to throw a couple of rocks, which interestingly enough, as this creature was caught within the time cage, he was still able to maneuver the exact rock that Hit had dodged in redirecting it towards Hit until then out of nowhere Frost had stepped in in wanting to prove to Hit that in fact he can be trusted as Frost went on to shoot the rock by responding, you're welcome. So again, these two have such a destabilizing relationship that it's fundamentally mainly built on loyalty and that's exactly what Frost is trying to prove to Hit that in fact he is trustworthy, that in fact he is loyal. Until then, Hit was finally shown having to turn around in shooting the creature through the heart with one of his energy blasts, in basically giving us what the pair would look like if they were in fact ultimately able to work together, to where as we then see them on a planet called Planet Dao, there were these creatures that kind of resembled that of either Frost's race or Frieza's race, which was interesting to say the least because Hit was shown having to hide behind a few houses, he was shown maneuvering through the trees, and I really like this because it kind of gives off the elements that Hit was on the hunt in wanting to assassinate someone, because as Hit slowly went on to aim his fingers in finding his target, he was then ready to make his move until then out of nowhere. The target that he had acquired was then shot by another individual, and this went on to take Hit back, because the moment Hit saw who it came from, it came from none other than Frost, as Frost went on to respond, it's super easy to be an assassin, actually. What's your problem, Hit asks. Uh, you can't hit your targets anymore, he asks, or am I just better than you, Frost responds. You will leave me alone from here 
on until the end of time. Have I made myself clear? Ouch, oh my, Frost says. It hurts like hell. I accept, under one condition. Prove your superiority to me, Frost says. Come on and fight. Which was awfully odd in the fact that Frost was taking this sort of like a game, because Hit almost looked as though he didn't want anything to do with Frost, while at the same time, Frost kind of wants to get something out of Hit, as of course he wants Hit to prove himself to him, as all the while in the meantime within the Grand Priest's palace, we then take a look at how the Grand Priest was shown having to sit on the throne, and something seems to be off about him, because in a weird way, the Grand Priest seems to be struggling with something as one of the Omni King's guards went on to step in by asking Grand Priest, I have tried everything to cover you, but the Kings will find out sooner or later. It, it's not that big of a deal, the Grand Priest says. Do not put yourself in any more danger, right, the Omni King guard says. As with the Grand Priest shown struggling, it looks as though he's trying his best in some way, shape, or form to maintain and keep captive the other gods of destructions and angels that were sealed away by him, as all the while within Universe 11, it appears as though Gohan seems to be sitting down with God of Destruction Topo, Angel Margarita, and Jiren, as they seem to be overseeing something which turns out to be none other than Belmont's corpse, with Belmont's corpse being shown having to be mummified, as of course there was a bit of energy being shown entering Margarita's staff, there was either a transfer of power happening or something going on to where it prompted Topo in having to stomp his foot on down to the floor, because even then Gohan went on to ask if Belmont is, but Jiren went on to stop Gohan by telling him, Margarita has no right to bring him back to life, nor to discredit his years accumulated at once, he says. Nevertheless, there is still hope that Lord Belmont is still with us, and if so, she's keeping him alive at the moment. I see, Gohan says. That said, now that I'm here, you know how much I share your sense of justice, which is why I'd love to join the Pride Troopers, he says. You picked the wrong time if you ask me, Jiren says, and Gohan is taken back as he goes on to plead with Jiren by telling him, I sincerely apologize, I shouldn't have bothered you all at this time. But then something went on to catch Jiren's attention as Jiren responds, it's nothing. Gohan, Topo says, we're a bit on edge because we had to rush the Divine Immortality Passing Ritual, but we don't blame you personally as Jiren and chimes in, in any case, we can integrate you into the Pride Troopers simply on your request, he says, so if you accept it, you'll come on a mission with us, and we'll evaluate you, with Gohan responding, I accept with great pleasure, thank you, Jiren, but that's when Dispo went on to snap his fingers and telling everyone, silence. I can hear his breath, Dispo says. Lord Belmont is alive! Which went on to take everyone back, which even I myself am beginning to put this into question because as to why they're now deciding to bring Belmont back is beyond me because in my own opinion, I do believe that Belmont should stay dead in order to further acclimate Topo in being the next God of Destruction. But even then, as all of this unfolds, back on Earth within Monster Island, we then take a look at how Android 17 seems to be doing something until something seemed to have crash landed on 17's island as this individual turned out to be none other than one of the universe 3 scientists to where as he was then shown having to exit his ship he then responds damn robot it's going to take a few more tweaks obviously anyway here's to a 17 you're that guy from universe 3 pepperami right and this took pepperami back because the last thing he was expecting was for 17 to be standing there as 17 continues what are you doing on my island Ugh. But that's impossible. My tracer indicated that. Beep, beep, you have arrived. Beep, beep. Uh, I see. Pepperoni 17, he says. I'm here because I have a proposition for you. How about teaming up with me? I went so far as to create an android based on the DNA off the Supreme Kai of my universe to come to yours. And to get to me, you took my DNA too, 17 asks? Just the hair of nothing, he responds. Don't you dare do it again, 17 says. All right, Paparoni adds, and I'm not interested in your proposal, 17 responds. But take a step back, Paparoni says. Think about your family. How will you defend them? I don't need you to defend them, 17 responds. Gah, arrogant. Do you have any idea who your enemies are this time? It doesn't matter, 17 says. If you die, that's how it goes. And Paparoni is baffled because the last thing that he was expecting was for 17 to say no until 17 had overheard one of his sons having to call for him as 17 went on to spot both of his children by responding sapphire and pearl what are you doing here i took them to play android 17's wife then pops in by telling him and we overheard you talking darling mama 
Mama, Dad, we don't want to die, and we don't want you to die either. No, no one's going to die, Seventeen's wife says. We have many years of joy left, and Seventeen was then beginning to remember all of his family's history, his playtime with his children, his wife, his future. As he finally then stopped to reconsider, as Seventeen comments, well... What's the plan, Paparoni? And with Paparoni then shown smiling, it was only then during that moment where Seventeen had accepted where the Dragon Ball Super Kakumi Manga Chapter Number 6 special then comes to a close. Now, what I really enjoyed about this chapter, outside of course all of its intricate details and having to create all of these beautiful landscapes, was seeing how we got three different perspectives from Seventeen, from Gohan, from Hit, and kind of finding out what they were doing as all the while we got to see what Vegeta was up to, which now begs the question as to what they're going to do because the only thing I did not like about this chapter was seeing how they were kind of going about this narrative and wanting to bring Belmont back, which again, I really don't see the point to, especially with Topo now being that god of destruction, but even then this creates so much more excitement for me in finding out what Gohan's going to do, in finding out what Vegeta's next move is going to be, in seeing Hit versus Frost this time around to kind of get a better idea as to where all of this confidence seems to be stemming from, from Frost in a sense to where he seems to be treating Hit like a lightweight in forgetting what Hit is capable of. So down in the comment section below, what I want to know from you guys is what you guys expect to see moving forward. And from all six chapters of Dragon Ball Kakumi that you guys have seen thus far, where would you guys rank Dragon Ball Kakumi manga chapter number six by comparison to the rest? As again, you guys can go on ahead and follow the official creators of this and go on ahead and read this for yourselves in which all of those links we located down in the description box below. As I do encourage you guys to make sure to follow the creators of this because not only are these kids and mind you, they're kids taking the time to actually create all of this for us, but they're doing it in such a unique way that the art style and the overall narrative for this just feels so much different and so much more refreshing than what we normally see from the Dragon Ball Super official manga, which again, I can't wait to see how this unfolds. So once more, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so very much for being here. As of course, if you guys just so happen to be new to this channel as well, then be sure to go on over and smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications by clicking on the bell icon to never miss a single video posted onto the channel. On top of giving this video a big Big fat thumbs up by smashing that like button down below. Tune back in for more, and I'll be seeing each and every single one of you down in the comment section below and in the next video. Take it easy, guys, and have a great day. Peace. This is the Galactic Emperor of the Universe, and of course, I'm here to tell you to subscribe to Unrelent Gaming. Also, follow Unrelent Gaming on these social media platforms to stay connected at all times. And if you don't, then very soon you will all be dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did someone say unrelent gaming? Oh my god. The fuck, Zarbon? Put on some clothes! Well, why don't you put on any clothes? What? I don't need clothes! But, uh, Jesus Christ, that's huge! <laughs> what, Broly? Freezer. Uh oh. Prepare to die! <laughs> <laughs> that I'm the biggest Unreal Ed gaming fan. This is my moment. I'm a part of his notification squad. Universe 7 can have all the fun. I just want the food. And don't forget to leave a comment on this video. Show some love for the best community on YouTube. <laughs> K -k 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 <laughs>